Welcome back, everybody. So if you remember last video, we set up a Raspberry Pi, and all we did was we put an image on it, and we put, you know, install Docker. So today what we're going to do is we're going to set up Samba on it, and we are going to go ahead and set up the Samba network attached storage, and we're going to map it to a Windows PC and to an iMac so that you have the experience of doing both devices, and it's really easy. And depending on how long this video gets at the end, I may discuss the Docker image that we're going to use for file transfers over the internet in a cloud-like situation that we have complete control over, uh, unlike something like Google Drive or uh, OneDrive, where uh, this other third-party people are controlling this data that we are wanting to share. So Ubuntu.com has the easiest to follow instructions for how to install uh, and configure Samba for storage, and I'll put a link to their website in the comments below. Uh, but since the last time that I connected to my Raspberry Pi, the IP address has changed. And so I used NSLOOKUP to find the IP address. And I wanted to show this example in case the same thing happened to you. So basically I opened Command Pump as administrator and did NSLOOKUP for the host name that I gave it, which was network so Pi. And there's the IP address. So now we're going to do SSH. Morgan apps .10 and since so I'm going through the command prompt and it's a different address, it's going to ask if I'm sure again. And it's going to ask for the super fancy password I gave it. And there we go, we're back in. So if you go back to Ubuntu.com and look at the instructions for installing the Fair Samba, it says that the first step for installing it is to run sudo apt update and then sudo apt install Samba. So I'm going to go here, sudo apt update. Now we're going to do sudo apt install Samba. I ask if you're sure. So now that that has finished, we're going to go back over to the Ubuntu website. And the next step it says is to check to make sure Samba is actually installed. So we're going to do where is Samba. And it's showing it in the user reference folder. So it's successfully installed. And that's the same output that they suggest on the website. So now we're going to set it up. And the first way to set it up is to make a directory for it to work in. So what we're going to do is we're going to make dir for make directory slash home. And then we're going to do slash user. And in this case, it's in Morgan. And then we're going to do Samba share. Well, so to actually make it in that directory. And this Samba share located under the user profile is the actual a directory that we're going to be sharing out to the Windows PC and to the iMac later in the video. So hit enter. I'm going to do a quick ls, it's home, it's Morgan, and then there's Samba share. Now, in order to be able to actually share that directory, we're going to edit Samba's configuration file. And Samba's configuration file is located at slash Samba slash SMD right there. And so I'm going to run sudo nano and do samba smd config. And here's the actual configuration file for the samba. We are going to go to the very bottom of the file. And depending on the size of their network, there's a lot of different things you can add in here. Here at the bottom, we're going to add the samba share that we just created. And I'm simply going to copy and then paste the instructions from Ubuntu.com website. And the only change to their instructions that I'm going to make is where it says username. And I change it to be Morgan because that's the actual directory path for the folder or directory that we created earlier. And then if you're not familiar with Nano, you're going to hit Control X. It's going to ask if you want to save it, hit Y, and it's going to ask if you want to rename the file or save it as something else, and we're going to hit Enter to back it up as that. If we look back to Ambition.com, it tells you in more detail what we did. Uh, we gave a comment for a description of the share that we added in. We did the path to the directory share. Uh, we turned read-only information off so that B. Morgan or the user can actually edit the file and share it. And then we made it browsable again so that we can easily find it on the machines we're going to be mapping into later. So now what we have to do is we have to restart the service. 
we'll need to clear some space and actually see what we're doing. And to restart the service, as a simple sudo service smvd for samba restart. And we're going to run the same command with status, make sure it's actually running. So the next step we have to do is we have to update the firewall to actually allow Samba traffic onto the Raspberry Pi. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do sudo UFW, UFW for universal firewall allow, sorry, space allow Samba. And this error message says sudo UFW command not found. This means UFW has not been, this means UFW has not been set up on the Raspberry Pi yet. So I have to think about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to sudo, sudo apt install UFW. And now that it's installed, we can run sudo UFW allow Samba. And it says rules updated. So now that the firewall rule has been set up on UFW for Samba, we need to set up a user account so that we can actually connect to it from a remote machine. And that's a really easy process. We're just going to run sudo smd password that a and then a username in my case be Morgan. Now it has in this situation it has to be for the account that the Samba share was created under. That's going to ask for a password for Samba and I'm going to do a slightly different one and I'll log in for this and actually confirm it. it. Says added user for Samba password. So now the fun part of actually connecting to it from a Windows PC first. And again, if you go back to Ubuntu.com website, there's really easy to read instructions for connecting on Ubuntu, mapping drive on Ubuntu, and mapping drive on a Windows PC. So in Windows, we're going to open the File Explorer. Once you open File Explorer, if it doesn't auto open to this PC, just simply click this PC. And what I always do is just right click and go add a network location. And the wizard's going to come up. And the wizard will come up to make this easier. And we're going to choose a custom network location, click next. What we're going to do for Windows it is a downhill slash and then the IP address for the Raspberry Pi. And then simply another downhill slash and Samba share. And click next. And if it successfully finds it, you'll get a login screen. And remember, in my situation, the username must be Morgan. And then I made a slightly different password. If you want to connect every single time, you're going to have to, first of all, you're going to have to tell your machine to remember credential. This network. This is just an alias for your machine. And click next. And it's going to auto open up the file. And right now, there's nothing in here. Uh, this is what you now see under this PC. You'll see it as a folder. And so to show that it's actually doing something, we're going to create a document. And we're just going to simply say test doc. Underscore Windows. So now, if I go back to my SSH screen and we do ls slash on the share, we see the test document that we just created on, on our Raspberry Pi. So it's successfully connected. Okay, so right now I am uh, using TeamViewer to remote desktop into an iMac machine that we found so that I can show you how to map to, the Soma, to a Soma share through iMac. Now, this is a remote location, so it may be the connection is a little unstable, but the process is pretty much exactly the same as Windows. I just wanted to walk through that for anybody there. But first, you're going to click on the finder menu. You're going to type in smd colon, and here it's going to be upscale slash. And, and now it's going to be upscale slash, samba share. You're going to hit enter. It's going to ask if you want to connect, so connect, and then it's going to ask for a user login. Now it's going to defeat the admin, it's going to default to the admin user for the machine you're using on IMAX. And so here, since we made a separate user, we're going to clear that out, put in the Samba user we created, and then the password we created. And I'm not going to tell it to remember this password because this isn't my actual machine, this is just for an example. And I'm going to click connect. Right off the bat, you see the test Windows document. And so to give you an example that it's actually connected to a Mac, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to name it Mac folder. I'm going to hit enter. And then now I'm going to go back to my SSH session. I'm going to run LS and the share again. 
And as you can see, there's now a matte folder. So we have successfully set up Samba on the Raspberry Pi, connected Samba Drive to a Windows machine, and connected Samba Drive to a Mac machine as well. While editing this video, I got to thinking it wouldn't hurt for you to see how to do this on a Samba, not the Samba folder from the Raspberry Pi to an Ubuntu machine, since Ubuntu has been coming more and more common. Now this is a virtual machine with Ubuntu 22 on it. I'm not going to have to go through how to set up the virtual machine. I already have a video for that, and I'll put a card for it somewhere here on the screen for you. But it's really simple to map to the Raspberry Pi Samba that we have to go up. You're going to click on the File Manager, click on Other Locations, and we're going to go to Connect the Server. And it's going to be SMB for Samba. So my R colon, two uphill slashes, the IP address 192.168.10.120, I believe. And then we're going to uphill slash Samba share. I'll click Enter. And if the client says successfully, it's going to ask you to log in. And remember, the username we created was B Morgan and the password. And as you can see, there's the Mac folder and there's the test manager documents. So it is successfully attached inside this Ubuntu virtual machine. Now, uh, a little side note, if you're doing a virtual machine, you have to set up a bridge network, which is as simple as going to your settings, <clears throat> excuse me, going to network, and then bridge adapter. Uh, you don't always want to do that for a virtual machine, but in this particular situation, since we are mapping to a Raspberry Pi here locally into the virtual machine, that would be the way to do this. And next time, I'm going to install a Docker image called a file browser, which will allow me to share uh, the specific, you can be as specific about the Samba share folder if you want to be, but you can share a specific folder with somebody through a web browser. And what we're going to do also is we're going to, uh, we're going to open up the Raspberry Pi to the external uh, world so that anybody can go through a web browser um, and access and log into the file browser profile that we're going to set up and access the folder. Um, the grand scheme of things, what I'm doing is I'm working on a video for a friend of mine that no, doesn't live anywhere near me. And instead of sharing the videos through something like Google Drive, where we can't really control uh, the network connection and the privacy of the videos and documents, uh, we can get a little bit more grain granular with file browser. And since this is a, just a one-time situation, it's real quick and easy to set up this. So be sure to hit like and subscribe down below, and please leave a comment on what you thought about the video, especially if you stayed this long here. Thank you guys.